Henri Bersan did not like the cinema. He tries it, in fact, in a book called Creative Evolution. And why? Well, one of the reasons is that he thought it was a very unconvincing illusion of mo movement. Um, Bersan did not think the cinema adequately connected with his key concepts of time and space and duration. In fact, Bersan did not think that film could effectively engage with duration whatsoever. Now, what on earth does this term duration mean for Bersan? In very brief terms, duration has to do with time and consciousness and how uh, these things can be measured f from a mechanical viewpoint and from a psychological viewpoint. So he thought, for instance, that time was not some sort of fixed entity that moves in strictly linear measures. Rather, time is unfixed and broken and subject to different kinds of speed. In other words, depending on the circumstances, we sometimes perceive time as going very quickly or very slowly, even though from the mechanical perspective of your wristwatch, it's always proceeding along at a very regular measure. So duration is the term he used to describe how people experience time in their inner lives. And so basically, Bersan felt that the cinema, no matter how beautiful, uh, no matter how beautifully it might express movement, utterly failed to express duration. And, you know, on this point, we got to keep in mind that as a man who lived from 1859 to 1941, Bersan would have grown up with the cinema and seen many advancements in it. So, in other words, he wasn't some crusty old man from the 19th century who hated emergent technology because that's what crusty old men do. Um, he was just a guy who thought it was um, out of touch with his philosophy of time and space and duration. Now another reason the cinema is inadequate for Bersan is because he thought it incapable of representing the nearly infinite multiplicities that are connected to how our daily lives emerge as we go through life. There's just simply too many details for cinema to adequately capture. And the term he might use here is becoming, or how we become what we become. Um, there's just too much to express in that kind of fulmination of being into time. Um, kind of a unusual way of wording things, but, uh, you know, biblically there's the idea that uh, God tells Moses uh, in the burning bush scene that I am becoming that which I become, which is to say there's this ongoing process of change as, as something emerges into time and space. So for Bersone, the idea that you could somehow capture the multiplicity of becoming would, would lack what he calls Elan Vital. Um, if anything, film can only take away from Ilan Vitel. He also says that one very damning element of film is that the illusion of movement comes not from the subject matter, but from the mechanical apparatus, which is to say that the illusion of movement comes from the rapid passage of still images through the projector. And the ultimate problem here for Bazan is that what the film is doing, or what cinema is doing, by giving us the illusion of these chopped up single frames, uh, recreating uh, some semblance of reality as they fly by at 24 frames per second, it's actually, in fact, exacerbating something that humans are already doing all the time. We already project the illusion of continuity onto the world. Our psychology requires us to see things as continuous and round and full and in sequence, when in fact it isn't that way at all. Time and reality are filled with giant holes and gaps and discontinuities and all kinds of disruptions and disjunctions, uh, many of which that happen outside of our awareness, and in many cases are forced outside of our awareness by our unconscious minds because we are. It's just too sim It's just simply too painful and disorienting to deal with the sort of chaotic nature of the external world. And interestingly, according to some, this sort of ability to filter out the multiplicities of reality and what's going on is a healthy thing when you think of it in contrast to something like the definition of autism, which is an inability to filter out all these phenomena and stimuli that are constantly um, competing again, you know, competing to our representat representation centers uh, for attention. So that means our visual representation center, our auditory, uh, our kinesthetic, our gustatory, and our olfactory centers are constantly bombarded. So um, we need a filtering system. And we project continuity in part on all that phenomenon in order to survive in daily life. So in sum, Bersan's complaint with the cinema is that it is a false image that is precipitated by an already false perception of the world. 
So the question is, how then does Bersan suggest we escape this circuit? You know, besides not going to the cinema or downloading a movie from Netflix, what can we do to somehow become aware of the real processes that are going on in reality? Well, I'll leave you with a slightly mysterious quote, but nonetheless thought-provoking idea from Creative Evolution, and depending on which edition you have, it'll be on page 308. So, Bersan says, in order to advance with the moving reality, you must replace yourself within it. Install yourself within change and you will grasp at once both change itself and the successive states in which it might at any instance be immobilized.